In part two of the satellite navigation series, I'm going to demonstrate the usage of ad hoc navigation on the 2013 TomTom -Tom GPS receiver. Garmin GPS receivers have a slightly different user interface, but the principles are identical. The first screen the rider sees is a map with a motorcycle icon in the middle. The device is idle, waiting for a command. I'll click on the map to get to the navigation command menu. We can see that there are a few options. Plan route, which is a regular ad hoc navigation. Plan winding route, which will perform a special path calculation preferring winding roads. And then you have manage itineraries. This is for custom design routes, which I'll describe in a future video. I'll click on the plan route. A few options show up. Home allows navigating back home without manually entering the address. The home address must be set once from the options screen. Address is the classical navigation to a given address. Point of interest allows navigation to a gas station, restaurant, hotel, etc. I'll click on address. A few options show up again. I'll click on street and house number. For this demonstration, I'll choose to write to Roadrunner Headquarters, which is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. First, I'll select the state, and I'll enter North Carolina. It shows up in the list. I'm going to select from the list. Next, I'm going to enter the city name, which is Winston. Salem, and you can see it is option number two. And now the city is chosen. The next thing that the system is going to ask me is the street name. I'm going to enter Spruce. Spruce Street, but I need actually North Spruce Street. Let's see if I have it in the list. And I have it over here. And the next thing I have to enter is the house number, which is 206. The system is now calculating the route. It can take some time because for my house in New Jersey to North Carolina, there are many, many options, and the calculation can be quite complex. The GPS currently calculates a route, as I explained in the article, using the shortest distance or shortest time preference and other settings. Once the route is calculated, the GPS changes to map mode and starts navigating to the target waypoint. The only thing I have to do is click on OK. And the GPS is now navigating to Roadrunner headquarters, which is a long way from home. It's about uh, 8 hours and 46 minutes. Another scenario is to navigate to a point of interest, or POI. If I want to do that, I'll first cancel this route change out and I'll cancel it to start from scratch. And now I'll go again into the planned route. Only this time I will not go to address, I will go to the point of interest menu and I will select POI near you. And let's say that I'm somewhere stuck in the in middle of an adventure and I'm running out of gas. Naturally I would look for a gas station and the system will show me all the gas stations uh, around my area, and you can see the, the, the radius, the distance from that point on the left side. For Exxon, for example, is 0 0.45 miles, and for uh, Speedway, it's 0 0.60 miles. Navigating to a POI is like carrying an electronic directory with you. Unlike your smartphone, for example, Google Maps application, the GPS receiver will work without 4G or Wi-Fi, even if you're in the middle of uh, a no reception area. If you want to try it, you can uh, travel to a state like Maine and uh, notice it yourself. There's uh, no data plans in most of the state. And as long as you have clear satellite reception, you will be able to navigate to that POI relying on your uh, GPS receiver. Once I select a POI, the GPS will start navigating to it using the exact same navigation method and preferences 
as if I entered the address of the PY manually. And now all I have to do is click on the OK button, and the GPS, once again, is in ad hoc navigation mode, navigating to the target point, which in this case happens to be a gas station. A third scenario, which is very useful for ad hoc navigation, is to navigate to a specific waypoint coordinates. First, let's cancel the current route and start from scratch. Navigating to specific coordinates can be very valuable if you want to accurately rendezvous with someone else. For example, your friend is waiting in the middle of an unnamed road and can't explain exactly where he or she is but they can text or email you the exact coordinates that they got from the GPS. Let's first see how we can find our current position. I'll click on the options and then on Help Me. Options, Help Me. The GPS receiver shows the latitude and longitude on the right side of the screen. This would be done if you want to send to someone else your coordinates. But if you want to navigate to that point that someone else sent you and rendezvous, or to help your friend, then there is another screen that allows you to enter the latitude and longitude. We'll go back to the main screen. Plan route. And then there's another screen over here, which is called, with an option called latitude and longitude. And then we can enter the exact coordinates. First latitude. So I can select some dummy um, coordinates of uh, north, 4, 4, 3, 3, 5, 5. Hit OK, and then enter the longitude, and I'll select another dummy value, which is west, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9. And once I do that, the GPS will calculate the route, again, using the exact same method for the other two um, ad hoc navigation methods and I will be able to ride to the friend and help him or rendezvous with him without any issues. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few new things. In the next article, part 3, I'm going to cover GPX routes and tracks as well as software for viewing, editing routes, uploading them to the GPS device and finally using them as custom routes. So stay tuned and ride safely.